You know what I was, you know when I'm interviewed because I've been around so long, you know, because when I came into, when I came into the city we were called Indians and then we became natives and we came, became Aboriginal and then we're now indigenous, you know. So when I talk about incidences that happened to me during, you know, during my, my lifetime, it, it, it was like, there's four, I, you know, <laughs> four areas that, you know, that I, that I, I have uh, uh, kind of seen a change in, in our identity and it's like, okay, now today I'm indigenous. I was non-status for a while <laughs> and so, you know, so you, you know, it, it, it's just such a, I don't know, you know, it, it's like, people or the government really can't find a true uh, uh, identity for us or, you know. Hello, my name is Marjorie White. Um, I call myself Marge for short. I'm, my traditional name is Nani Himis. I, I carry the traditional name of my great-grandmother. And um, I'm, uh, I'm from the Hawaii First Nation on the west coast of Vancouver Island. We're part of the New Channels, uh, New Channels tribe. So I uh, went to the Albert New Residential School for all of my schooling. Not, not all of my schooling. I, when I started grade nine and going into high school, I went to the Albert New District High School. And, um, and uh, I... Uh, Finished my schooling and, and I actually took a part-time job at the Nanaimo Indian Hospital so that I could gain some experience in, in healthcare because um, my goal was to uh, take up nursing. And so in 1956 I came to Vancouver to take up a nursing course. and. Um, and uh, I graduated from there, and in 1957, I, I joined an organization called the Kokolitsa Fellowship, which was an organization uh, comprised of ex-students and ex-teachers from the Kokolitsa Residential School. And <laughs> I was... I think I was about 21, 20 or 21 when I joined the organization. And um, I uh, actually, I was just interested because uh, having come to Vancouver where there were no resources and very few, there were very few of us indigenous people in the, in the city at the time. And so having, experience, having experienced the um, you know, the loneliness and the separation of family and uh, community. I, I joined that organization just to keep, up, keep my identity, I suppose. You know, we realized that uh, the, the uh, numbers of our people were come, more and more were coming into the city. And so we had concerns about, um, you know, uh, how we were going to provide, uh, provide assistance to them. We provided, uh, you know, assistance to those who are coming into the city. We, um, we actually, you know, referred them to help, uh, to uh, provide health care, um, housing, uh, employment, and health, you know, any, any of the um, assistance they needed. You know, we looked at, uh, you know, the needs of, of the people that were coming into town and, and they realized that more, more of our young people were coming in for education. And so we kind of had four options as to what we want to focus on. And uh, we, we, we talked about the need for a gathering place, uh, a, a student residence, uh, health, you know, uh, health services and and uh, justice, and so we uh, decided that we w we wanted a a gathering place because it was more 
uh, more of what we wanted to, to do to address the um, feeling of loneliness and isolation, separation from family. I think we wanted to, you know, form um, new family relations among the students that, that were coming into the city and among the families that were coming into the city to have some place where they can kind of call their own. And, you know, when you work for the government, you have restrictions as to your involvement within, within the community. And so I kind of stepped away from there, from some of my work uh, for three years, but, uh, but still gave advice on the side. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's important to share your, your experiences and your knowledge. You know, 17 years later, I'm still, I'm still very involved in the community. And, and uh, you know, and I think it's, um, I feel that like I've had a, a very um, rewarding life. I think you become an advocate if you care, if you care about whatever the situation is today or or you know I, I think what inspired me to to keep on uh, with this work is hearing the stories that I, I, I got from other people and um, and trying to put that into action not just listening and hearing and doing thank you for the information but actually uh, putting into action the um, whatever the need was in, in the community. My nation is actually opening a, a, a center in Port Alberni to provide a service for our you know, young mums that are in need of uh, more um, skills in parenting or if they're at a risk of uh, having their children apprehended or, or you know, whatever the case may be, just kind of help support, give it, to give them some support in, um, in uh, parental care and, you know, and that kind of thing. So I always say that one of the things that I, I have really got a lot of resentment for in the residential school system is the uh, losing my culture and not, you know, losing my language because when I started uh, residential school, I was fluent in my language and <laughs> I spent my first year, practically my first year, translating for those who spoke my dialect, in, you know, in the classrooms. Uh, and, uh, but when I got to the playground, the supervisor wouldn't allow us, allow us to speak our language. And if we did, we got a spanking or a hit on our, you know, hands for speaking our language. So that was so, such a controversial incident that that, you know that has kind of affected me over so many so many years just to know that you know that I could do one thing in one place and not not in the, not in the other place so but um, anyway that that's you know that's been my that's been my thing for all of these years giving traditional names to to family members was really important for me because um, you know, I know that um, we we were denied in some some ways when our potlatches were banned that we couldn't practice our culture, and and yet I heard stories from my grandparents, and I've had two translations of my my name, and one name is that well, it's a high it's a high matriarch name because uh, my. Um, my great grandmother was the daughter of a of a hereditary chief, and then uh, she married a, a, her a hereditary chief from another nation. So she, you know, she was high. She had high standing, and so one of our knowledge keepers told me that the, the name is that uh, that I um, I belong to many nations. You know, many tribes, he said, and then um, and then another one was that uh, that I'm I'm sort of a giver, a provider, or you know, uh, of uh, of our community. So <laughs> so it's kind of you know these 
it, it, it was a hard, it's been a hard trend. It's been hard to translate my name because it's a very, it's a very old name. It's not something that, you know, it's not uh, um, a name that was just created for, you know, for me, it, it's, um, it, 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 always, it always belonged to the eldest uh, female in the family. When I started this work, I, I mean, I came to Vancouver to nurse, and I only nursed for about two years after I graduated, and then, and then, uh, you know, uh, started this the, the Indian Center, and then, and then there were so few people of our people that were trained to do anything. We're just all coming to get started in a career, right? So we didn't have that the the, the um, human resources to fill in a lot of the um, areas that I, you know, I saw as a, as a need. 